Actually, hold on. Let's let's do that right now, okay? So, Metroid Dread review six yeah, months later sure. by Zeltroid. Thumbnail says something about changed my opinion. So, uh, he changed his opinion six months later. I'm actually curious. I didn't watch the first opinion about him. So, if there's a video out there, you know, guys, link it to me and I'll watch it. Right, let's let's get into it. By the way, this Zeltroid, go check him out. Does great videos. Love his content, and I love Zelda and Metroid. You already know. There you go. So as of today, it's been exactly six months since the launch day of Metroid Dread, and I actually already made my review for the game on this channel. Right. The thing is, I rushed out that review on October 10th, which was just two days after the game released. It was a very reactive review based on my feelings in that exact moment. But with now six months to objectively dissect this game, I've realized that many of my initial feelings have changed. I f I'm not gonna lie, I fucking loved the soundtrack. In Metroid Dread, obviously it's not as as like recognizable as a, you know, fucking Red Tower in Super Metroid or something, or Lower Norfair, which everyone likes. I don't, because if you have heard it for like you know ten years over and over, anyway, as I was trying to say. Uh, but it had good soundtrack, right? People were like, oh, it's not as recognizable. Yeah, but like it, it actually did a good job, in my opinion. Not all of them, but like a lot of them. Were like good soundtracks with like this atmospheric feeling. I think they captured it really well. Some more dramatically than others. So without screwing around any longer, let's get into them. One of the most scrutinized aspects of this game after its release was its somewhat lacking soundtrack compared to the other Metroid games. The music has grown on me. Yeah, I was about to say, okay, here we go. That's, uh, I should have waited. This is the same pre-watched, okay? This isn't pre-watched. But to be honest, the, the music the fact he started has grown on me as time has gone on. I think many of us had a lot of nostalgia acting as the an fact that he started with mute call talk criticism. about music immediately. I will admit, I would have loved to have heard a remix version of Kraid's theme before our battle with the big. That would have been nice, because but it's also I mean, appreciating the fact that Mercury Steam wanted to provide new music in order to give us a unique experience. Not every lava level. Wasn't Kraid's theme just a generic boss fight theme? Yeah, pretty much. But it would have been a nice, like a callback. It's like Super Metroid OST, you know. Level in the Metroid universe needs to have a remix version of Lower Norfair's theme. But up until Dread, that's the state of Metroid games for many years now. I do think there's an appropriate amount of nostalgia and homages that need to be present in modern renditions. But in order to keep the franchise fresh and exciting moving forward, it's crucial for there to be new tracks and new enemies. Tracks like the themes for Cataris, the boss music for the Chozo Soldiers, and for Experiment Z57 are all new tracks that get me pumped up for battle every single time I hear them. The score certainly doesn't have the range and depth of the Prime series, but oh, I do obviously. think I was initially more critical than I should have been. Something else I've noticed is that this game isn't nearly as difficult as most of us made it out to be. Now is Metroid Dread a genuinely challenging game? It's, it's not. Okay. It is a challenging game. I'm not going to lie. Uh, it, I think this is like, I think Dread captured a nice balance between like modern way to introduce challenging games and still keeping the old way of, you know, hard games. So, you know, I think they did a great job with that. And I hope they continue doing that because like it's not hard as in... Bro, I just have to keep, you know what I mean? I keep losing. And that, that. There have probably been a lot of deaths by people, including me. But <laughs> all in all, uh, it wasn't, you know, as hard as a lot of other, like, you know, retro games, old retro games. So I think uh, people can appreciate that. That's still challenging. It's not like holding your hands like any other um you know uh, new games but it's a challenge 
but it's also not too challenging. On his first playthrough? Definitely, but there isn't a single attack in this game that is unavoidable. And in fact, most of the attacks are actually pretty predictable. Like they are, yeah. Hold on a second. Most old school NES and Super Nintendo games, the key is memorizing the enemy patterns and learning the subtle cues that indicate what's coming. Once you begin to discover this, much of this game actually becomes somewhat of a breeze. At this, it is a breeze, and uh, if you just if you just want to take it slow, kill the boss slow, it's actually a lot easier. It only gets a lot harder when you try to like quick kill the boss as quick as possible because they're like trying to like spam the buttons. Uh, spam doing the uh you know quick shots you know that kind of stuff at this point i've learned all of these patterns and just recently on my twitch channel i beat the game on hard mode with zero percent items that's the extent i have to go to in order to keep this game challenging after several all right now you're flexing okay i get it okay i get it you're good zero percent all right that's good we all like ourselves a good Play it through of 0% hard mode. <sighs> Meanwhile, I'm still stuck in uh, hard mode on the percent. Several months into it, the game also has an overwhelming amount of checkpoints and save stations, so regardless of where you die, it never really feels all that punishing. Some may see that is true. Not gonna lie, um, it also does like backup saves, like like, uh, like auto saves. Because like when you die, you start at a at a, at a door or something. Uh, it's different if you like close the game, and then start. That's what. But like if you die, like in a boss fight, you 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 start in a boss fight. Like, uh, sorry if I'm wrong. Uh, it has been a while since I played Dread. Okay, I'm just gonna say that out in the bat now. So this as a positive and i understand that but it also naturally makes the game less challenging when nearly every bit of progression is immediately saved with either yeah, but like a said, point or a safe new station. players for new so players again, this is good is the game's difficulty designed now, for the modern it's good that it's like journalist? that definitely not as it expects you to learn and adapt to its rules true but let's also not act like this is one of the most difficult games of all time because it's nowhere close to that either. <laughs> Another thing I've noticed, True. and this is definitely the thing that's bothered me the most. It is quite linear. Okay, now we're getting to the fusion ter territory discussion, right? Because fusion was also super linear, you know? People, but people still loved it, you know? I actually uh, enjoyed fusion a lot. And I think uh it, there's still a lot of like ways to sequence break because you see in the speedrunners what is the sub uh world record hour now is it is it one hour like sub one hour i think even sub 50 i think someone I, I forgot what it was but uh but yeah definitely uh not as linear as fusion i think I would say. Correct me on that. Most as time has gone on is the fact that this game is much more linear than I initially thought. When I was first playing through Metroid Dread, the game gave me the illusion that the map was pretty wide open and I had a significant amount of control about where I went. Unfortunately, that wasn't actually reality as the game subtly funnels you in specific directions, oftentimes by sealing off certain exits mm -hmm. and usually by giving you prompt transportation to the exact part of ZDR that you need to access. Realizing this was actually pretty disappointing for me as a longtime Metroid fan. Part of the beauty of old school Metroid games was the fact that you would often get lost. That helpless feeling of not knowing where you are or where you need to go certainly helped give you that isolated experience that's become such a staple element of Metroid games. True. After getting lost time and time again, eventually discovering what you needed to do next naturally felt all the more rewarding because of how hard you had to dig to find it. Unfortunately, when it comes to exploration, Dread feels a bit like it's holding your hand along the way, as if you're not intelligent enough to figure it out on your own without the sealed off doors. Now, Metroid Dread certainly- For us longtime players, it does feel like that. But I think for a newbie, and I watched 
you know, I watched my brother play it, you know, Z has been playing it. Uh, it it's not as, you know, and <laughs> holding as we experience it, right? I can, I can, uh, how should I say that? I, I can see that, right? And I can acknowledge that. For us, it feels like hand-holding, but for a lot of new players, it doesn't. They, 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 they do get lost. They're like, what the fuck am I, what do I have to do? I'm like, what, what? you know what I mean? Anyway. Isn't the first 2D Metroid game to give a very linear experience, as Metroid Fusion, Fusion yeah. not only funneled you in specific directions, but Adam is literally constantly fucking marking Adam. the exact route you need to go to on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. It's a great- That's what I said. You guys, I don't know if you guys played the Metro Fusion Rando, but the Metro Fusion Rando is amazing. If they would have, because because it disables Adam completely. All you had, all you can do is you can go to Adam if you need info, and it'll give you like a hint for the next item or whatever. And that was that's actually cool. So if you need hint, you can go to him. But if you want to skip, you just skip it. Go for it. Go straight for it. Right. And. Um, you know, Kaz, if you're watching, man, you know, uh, fusion sequence break hack plus skip Adam. Boom. Best fusion game ever. Man, I will play fusion day and night. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Notes. Wow, guys. Wow. Game in many ways, but the explorative nature was almost completely gone, as you're literally just following directions rather than making destination decisions on your own. If Mercury team are the ones responsible for developing the next 2D Metroid game, my hope is that they take this kind of feedback and incorporate a more free-flowing dynamic in the next installment. Yeah, that's what Other I thought. The aspects Here's I just... the thing. Remember how they did Metroid Samus Return? Sorry, I'm pausing the video a lot. I know it's a short video, okay? I need to make a 50 minutes video about the three minutes video, okay? Uh, anyway, so what it is is um shit what i want what did i want to say yeah so it's linear dude I, I lost my train of thought hold on hold on let me get back into okay okay now now i realized um so you know how they did metroid sam's returns if metroid sam's returns if instead of metroid sam's returns dread would have released and then the current dread would have been like a new game Yo, this company, you know what I mean? Like, we, we wouldn't have been talking shit at all. Because if Metroid Dread was uh, released, when instead of Metroid Sam's Returns, we'd be like, oh shit, yo, look, this, it looks like they're going to a, into a d good direction. And then, you know, the next Metroid Dread dropped with, like, even more uh new stuff mechanics etc dude would've, people would have lost their sh lost their shit right so imagine if samus returns the remake was like this and then metroid dread was something more dude it's just, it's just like halo 4 and uh if halo F infinite was halo 5 and then halo infinite was an even more improved version of infinite I'm just saying, man. See, that's what they always. I ask continue. <laughs> this kind of feedback and incorporate a more free-flowing dynamic in the next installment. Other than the aspects I just spoke about, most of what I said in my initial review still holds true. The game is still remarkably gorgeous. Ravenbeak is an incredible villain. Samus has never acted more like a badass than she does in Dread. And she's never been more fun to control with the smooth animations and with the excellent button mapping. With the extra time to factor everything in and truly consider my feelings about it, I think this game has taken just a slight step back since my initial review. Shortly after I completed it, I gave the game a 9 out of 10, but I'm dropping it now to an 8. It also slightly falls down my list of my favorite Metroid games, with now all okay. three of the... Okay. I thought this was a more positive review. I was... Did I lost my mind. Okay. Prime games along with Super Metroid ahead of it. So what do you guys think? With more time to ponder. Yeah, like I said, I have to watch this original one. 
the first opinion one. Your Metroid Dread, how has your feelings evolved since this game released six months ago? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching as always. Make sure to like and subscribe for more Nintendo content, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Good. Thanks so much, Zeltroid. Guys, if you want to check out Zeltroid, go on and sub to him, you know? Watch his videos. He's doing fun content with Zelda and Metroid. Uh, we still got to get to the Zelda content of it. We just watched Metroid content lately. But, uh, you know, definitely, definitely great videos.